For absolute years, people have been talking about the growing antisocial nature of the MMORPG genre. Games that used to be really focused on social elements, you can now just completely play by yourself and in fact are encouraged to. People that grew up with games like EverQuest lament the days when you would group with six people and four of them you hated and the other one was just kind of okay. But what if games went the other way? No, I'm not actually talking about a social MMO. That would be crazy, right? No, I'm actually talking about a single player RPG that's emulating a social MMO. That's what's kind of being done by Aaron Shore, an indie game being created and developed by Burgie Media. An MMO RPG where the O stands for offline and it's being created by the head of Burgie Media himself, Brian Berger, alongside community manager Richard Zamore. This independently developed RPG is trying to do something pretty unique and in its goals, it's got a lot of promise. What I played was just a short demo, so there's still a lot of the game I didn't get to experience, but what I did get to play was a charming adventure, a love letter to MMOs from past like EverQuest and RuneScape. And if you want to give the game a try, you're not gonna have to wait very long because the demo that I played will be available on September 8th. The game will also be part of the Steam Next Fest in October, so something else to look forward to if this game is, is, is something that you're interested in testing out or trying. And thankfully, they have already committed to not having microtransactions, which says a lot about the gaming industry, but that's a that's a win. That's a, that's a damn win. Now, honestly, the target demographic for this game is pretty damn apparent. <laughs> And it's why when I was asked to kind of look at this game and do a review of it, I was happy to do it because the people that this game is targeting are probably you. Fans of old school MMOs, fans of different types of MMOs, because that's kind of what it's trying to create in a very different way. Essentially, it is the MMO player that likes to relax and play the game by attacking the guards. The game simulates the MMO experience from an active zone chat to actual simulated group members who will join you and fight respawnable NPCs. As a fun little quirk, the way you get group members to join you is actually by sending them a whisper, and not a single one of them calls me any mean names, and that, is this really an MMO? And they all, they run directly to you all ready to group up, and not a single one of them went AFK. I did. I went AFK, you know, because my food had just arrived and it was just going to take about five minutes. I, I was going to be right back. They can handle the group without me. There's no need to break up the group or stop it or wait. They can just keep going, keep fighting while I go get my food. I'll be right back. Just just right back. Your eyes can deceive you. Don't trust them. The content plan for the game is ambitious, with up to 100 hours of total content in the game. The demo is only about an hour of that. The other 99 hours of content may be trying to catch that goddamn moongill fish. Like, seriously, I tried all night to try and catch that, that damn fish. Nowhere to be seen. Got lots of other fish, plenty of fish that I could eat and get buffs and stuff like that. No damn moongill. But that also brings us to another point about the game. Fishing, like combat in the game, is going to be pretty basic. There isn't a whole lot of interactivity with it, but that's kind of what this game is going for. It is a game that's harkening back to the old school MMOs, good and bad parts. But the fact that it was there in game at all had me wondering what other skills will be in the game? And when the game does fully launch, will there be any kind of changes to how this how this plays out or how it works? Will there be things that you have to actively do? Aaron Shore was interesting because there was obviously a lot of complexity in some parts of the game, like the grouping up with NPCs part, as well as other NPCs running around the game, acting essentially like other players, filling out the world in a way that other RPGs don't really 
try because they're trying to simulate other people. But there are also other parts of the game that are simple, but they're simple by choice. And this includes perhaps the biggest thing for a lot of people, which is going to be combat. The combat feels very, very much like playing EverQuest in the early days, hitting auto attack and just kind of letting it go. This was in part because I played a duelist, which is some sort of melee class. I could see the combat feeling boring to some, but if you think of where this game is coming from, inspired by MMOs of the late 90s and early 2000s, it fits perfectly. It is that combat system. And you do get certain skills. I mean, I like, for example, I actually got an item that gave me a spell that I could cast that was as a, as a melee. It was, there's some, some interesting things happening. And there are actually four different classes in the game. The Druid, the Arcanist, Duelist, and Paladin. And yes, you can actually play them all. The game comes complete with its very own character creator, and you can create multiple characters on the same account that will have a shared bank, allowing you to kind of play it like a, an MMO where you have a higher level character and then a twink character that you send gear to to help them you know, kick ass faster. It's kind of an interesting and novel concept, a, a, th a way to play the game and actually give it some replayability the same way that you would have in an MMO, but in a single player RPG, it's, it's, it's interesting. But I think my favorite part is the random messages you see. As you travel around the world, you'll see all these random messages appear appearing in your chat and in your group chat. People that are trying to sell things, people that are asking for tips in the game, which funnily enough, that's actually a really good way to do a tutorial. If you're trying to make this feel like an MMO, you could very easily use the flavor text that is being done this way to give little tips like, well, there's a dungeon here or remember to press I for your inventory. Just have the, you know, the same kind of questions you'd normally see in an MMO where people could look it up, but instead they ask general chat and then someone gets a snarky reply saying you just Google it. You know what? Maybe, maybe it doesn't have to be quite, quite like an MMO. But it goes even more into the EverQuest mold because the way you get quests is very different. It's not the way that you would get it in, say, like a World of Warcraft or a Final Fantasy 14, where you have this quest icon above someone's head. You actually have to go around and hail the NPCs. Yes, hail, hail like you have to do in EverQuest. And did I mention, did I mention there's this really cool thing you can do? You can attack the guards in this game. It's just probably a little bit ill-advisable. Now, I was wondering, like, why, why did this tickle me so much? Why was it so interesting to me that you could go and attack the guards in the city? And I realized part of it was the, the death animation as well as the sound, because it, I just found it kind of comical. But it also reminded me of my first experiences in EverQuest when I was when I was a young kid playing it and thinking and, and trying to ha get a quest from an NPC and accidentally hitting. I believe it was at the time it was a was auto attack. And so I auto attack and it didn't go very well for me. I ended up dying and it was just one of those things that that kind of feeling of the world being less safeguarded, being less protected. It's kind of on the same pathway as like Baldur's Gate 3 and, and Skyrim, not, the, not in the scope or anything like that, but just that the world itself doesn't feel as protected. It, it, it feels more open, kind of the way that it did with EverQuest early on when you could accidentally attack anyone. And sadly, while there were no quests or achievements for the Valiant attack on this much higher level guard, it did tie into a part of the game that was truly interesting. Quests are provided much the same way you would get them in an old school MMO. You hail the NPC and you follow the quest text. There's no obvious indicators of quests either to get them or where you have to go to finish the quest. You just kind of have to investigate and explore. You stumble upon a quest from a random NPC to retrieve a coin 
from some bandits, but it's not clear where the bandits are. You're trying to get off the island, but there's no obvious path to do so. You have to figure it out yourself. The game isn't trying to hold your hand, it's actually trying to encourage you to go and explore and figure stuff out yourself. Kind of like the classic MMOs that it is obviously inspired by. But you know what, if someone goes forward and like creates an EQ Atlas style map, like you know the hand drawn maps that many of us who played EverQuest back in the day really loved, like that would be so cool just to see that happen with anything like this. But let's break down something I liked about the game, something I didn't like about the game, and something I would like to see more of in the game. First, of course, is that I liked the MMORPG elements that were tied into the game. They felt well thought out and they felt innovative. I haven't really seen an RPG do something like this before, and the novelty had me laughing and grinning through the little demo seeing people trying to sell things, getting all those those nostalgic memories of MMOs from the past that I have played and enjoyed. If you played those MMOs, you're going to have the same kind of nostalgic novelty feelings. I think that is quite obviously the strength of this game. But what I didn't like is kind of tied between the combat and the graphics. But because I want to be fair to the combat, as I expect it to evolve as you level up, having more skills and making it more difficult and as they say in, in their press kits, adding in some extra challenge and like need to be positioning and you can actually position pretty well with your group. I, I, I want to give that like kind of like a pass for now in the demo and instead point to the graphics because well, that's kind of, you know, my personal opinion here. It kind of feels a little bit too much like RuneScape in some ways, RuneScape or even like Minecraft, but that's just that's more of a me thing. I think it's not my style. I It's not the kind of the kind of game that I personally am drawn to. It's that like the, the reason why I enjoy my time in this game wasn't the graphics. It was the gameplay. It just felt fun. And it was it was like I said, a love letter to MMOs. I really enjoyed that part of it a lot. I think if I had grown up playing like RuneScape instead of EverQuest and Ultima Online, I would have enjoyed it more. But to many people, this is going to be really fun and cute and, and, and just the kind of thing that they're looking for. Now, what I would love to see added is more Easter eggs and nods to older MMOs. The game feels tailor made not to take itself too seriously from the be social shout out in the game that as well, you can't actually be social in to the random chatting and shout and the, the you know the sometimes playful banter across npcs in the game that are supposed to be people to the little patch notes everything about it feels like it's just trying to simulate that mmo feel without actually being an mmo and i would love to see them take on different things like from actual mmo mmos to give that little little feeling like, oh, I recognize that. You know what I mean? Like the kind of just that little tiny little burst of dopamine. Like, for example, if we had a trop fear from Maver or whatever the hell this thing is saying, you know what? Try and decipher it down there in the comment section. I think once like many EverQuest fans will get what I'm talking about. But that kind of thing, those kind of Easter eggs, I think would be awesome just to see. And I would love to see more of that, especially in the main game. Throw in stuff to, like alluding to World of Warcraft, to, to RuneScape, to EverQuest, because the target audience of this game is the players of those games. You know, give them give them something to recognize and appreciate. That's that's my thing that I would personally like to see more of in the game. It's the kind of thing that I find super endearing. Again, if you want to try this game, the demo is going to be coming out on September 8th, so you really don't have to wait very long to give it to get in there and, and see if it's it's fun and nostalgic for you as it was for me. My name is Edward Flint. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.